Hello and welcome to this section of the Calculus Derivative Help Tutor. Uh, in this section we're going to talk about what we call the uh, natural exponential functions. Uh, right? So you've all probably been exposed to exponential functions before. Here we're going to talk about a very specific uh, uh, natural exponential function that basically means that the base is going to be e, this very special number e, uh, raised to the power of x. So all of the functions we're going to deal with here are going to be e raised to the power of x. And uh, you may not have studied that function too much up until now, but I promise you e to the power of x or any function that resembles that is a very important function in all of science and engineering and you'll, it'll pop up over and over and over because e is such a special number. So what we're going to do is talk about, in general, e to the power of x. Now remember, this is just a number, 2.7 something. Uh, raised to the power of x. Uh, and I want to go ahead and, and give a little bit of background to it just so you know where we're coming from. So I want to tell you that e raised to the power of x is the what we're going to call inverse, which you've probably studied before in algebra, is the inverse function of the natural log of x. Now that shouldn't be too much of a surprise to you that this function is an inverse of this function because the natural log is a logarithm with a base e. So there's a base e wrapped up in here, so there's a, a, an e wrapped up in here as its base over here. These guys are inverses of one another. Now you probably studied inverses all over in algebra, uh, but in this context when we say inverse, what I'm basically saying is the following thing. If I take a natural log, and instead of putting x inside of here, if I put in e to the x, which is its inverse, what do you think I'm going to get back? Uh, I'm going to get back x. So literally, do this in your calculator. And so forget about x for a second. If I take the number 2, make x equal to 2, and take e raised to the power of 2, e squared, and I get a number, and then I take the result of that, and I take the natural log of the answer, then what I'm going to get back is 2. Right? It works for whatever number you put in there. You put 1500 in for x, e to the 1500 power. You're going to get a big number. You take the natural log of the answer that you get, and you're going to get back uh, the, large, the large number, the 1500 that you started with. Right? Uh, and that works for everything because they're inverses of one another. And consequently, because this is true, uh, the following is also true. If I take e, the other function, and raise it to, instead of x, raise, raise it to the power of the natural log of x, I'm going to get back x as well. And this is sort of the definition of what an inverse function is. Two functions are inverses if basically you plug one function in uh, to the other one and you get back, you know, your variable back, basically, in this case. So that's what's going on here. Now this is sort of an aside, uh, just to kind of get you familiar with these guys. It's not really calculus here, but it is very important because you can actually use these properties to solve equations. You know, just as an aside, what if you had an equation like, you know, uh, e to the x is equal to uh, x plus 2. Or actually, let's take this away. e to the x is equal to, you know, 3. How would you solve that equation? If somebody said, hey, solve for x. Well, you see, all growing up with algebra, right? Our geometry and, and trig and these other math classes that you've had, especially algebra, you've learned how to solve equations. You were taught that the opposite of addition is subtraction. You were taught the opposite of multiplication is division. And you were taught to isolate variables by just dividing or multiplying or adding or subtracting to isolate the variable you want. Right? You were taught uh, that the opposite of a square root is to take the square of something. So you can e basically remove a square root by taking the square of both sides of an equation. Right? So here, how would you isolate x? Well, you can't add or subtract or multiply or divide. The only way to do it is to take the inverse.